you, thank you. Hello, can y'all hear me? All right, uh, so basically right now, um, I'm working with a couple of guys. Uh, we are basically, I mean just a little introduction to myself. Um, we are basically working on a boot camp to teach people uh, how to, le how to you know, just learn full stack web development faster. Um, we will be launching in January, so if anyone is interested, uh, you know, let us know. And also, um, we are looking for content contributors. Uh, so if any one of you, you know, you guys are interested, let us know as well. Um, you can get more information from bootcampsg.kickoffpages.com. We don't know what to call it yet, so. Okay, um, so yeah, today we are gonna talk about I'm going to talk about uh, building a real-time chat app using HTML5 WebSockets. Um, have any one of y'all used it before or no? So I'm actually a Ruby developer, but I will be presenting using Node.js uh, when, when, when we actually start coding. Okay. Before we get started, you know, I just want to talk about how the web works for those who are not very familiar. Uh, so basically the web works by... okay. There's a client browser, so let's say you type in google.com in your browser. Uh, what happens is that um, your browser would send a HTTP request to Google server. Uh, Google server would uh, basically process the request and return a HTTP response, which includes a, uh, a header and a body and so on and so forth. So just based on this knowledge, you know, how would we naively build a chat app, right? Uh, we can build it in such a way that, okay, so you're in the chat application, the user sends a message, so that's a HTTP request. The server will receive the message and probably store it in the database, and then it would uh, return a success message to the client browser, um, and then, other clients, so you know, this chat app is not just for one person, right? There's a lot of other users as well. So other users would maybe pull the server every single second to get new messages. Um, and then the server would send the other clients this new message. So um, to make it more visual, this is how it, how it looks like. So there's a client browser. So let's say K is... Uh, a user and she's chatting, she sends a message to the server, how's it going? The server receives a message and basically the server would say, okay, I received your message, okay? And there will be other client browsers um, that's trying to, so other client browsers will basically ping the server again and say, are there any new messages? So if you have client, five client browsers, every single second, these five client browsers would be pinging the server, are there any new messages? Are there any new messages? And then the server would say, yes, you know, there's a message from K, how's it going? And this goes on and on and on. So what's the problem here, right? The problem is that every client would constantly be asking the server over and over and over again. So there's a lot of requests there. So um, the, the main question is, when should client browsers request for new messages? And because a client has no idea when there is a new message that is being received. So in the previous example, we solved it by, uh, as I've mentioned just now. So just imagine, right, like your chat application, let's say there are 100, 100 users and every user is pinging the server every single second that's a lot of requests you know in one minute you would have 6,000 requests uh, hitting your server and then there's another problem HTTP this is how a HTTP request header looks like okay there's a lot of other information about a browser and stuff like that and then from the server there's a HTTP response header that is also a lot of other information so what is the main problem about this haters? Well, I did some calculation and it's about 871 bytes of, you know, somewhat unnecessary information for a chat application. Um, 
871 bytes doesn't seem like much, but if you do some math, uh, just imagine you have 1,000 clients pulling every single second. You know, we are talking about 6.6 .6 megabit per second for your network throughput. And what if you have 10,000 or 100,000 clients? You know, we're talking about a, sh a whole lot of uh, data. Um, yeah, and this actually doesn't even include the chat body yet, the message. So that's really unnecessary for a chat app. So there was a technique called polling. Um, it sounds kind of stupid, but in the not so distant past, uh, this is actually a very common technique. And there are other alternatives like long polling, HTTP streaming, and so on, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about WebSockets. So what is WebSockets? Uh, WebSocket is a HTML5 specification. Uh, it's actually a communication protocol. Um, and it basically allows the browser and the server to have bi-directional communication over a single channel. So it's a lot more efficient and there will be no HTTP haters involved. And it allows the server to basically broadcast messages without the client uh, initiating for a uh, for 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 something. And what's good about WebSocket is that there are libraries out there that allow you to hook up your native mobile apps. Uh, if let's say you want a native chat client on your on your phone, Android, iOS, and stuff like that. So uh, a very smart guy in who is part of the WebSocket uh, effort, uh, he basically said this, right? Reducing kilobytes of data to two bytes and latency from 150 millisecond to 50 millisecond, it's, uh, it's very significant. And just these two factors alone makes WebSocket very interesting. So what will we, what will we use WebSockets for? Uh, Real-time apps, uh, so chat apps, stock tickers, news report, traffic patterns, even real-time games, and so on and so forth. All right, so let's get building. Um, for this presentation, I'm gonna use Node.js, and I'll, why Node.js? Um, at first, I wanted to present this using Sinatra, uh, Ruby, and with a Sinatra framework, but I decided that Node.js is probably a better fit for this because Node.js allows you to write non-blocking code, which is awesome, in terms of a very, uh, Let's say a chat app would be, you would want a lot of users essentially. And um, I'm going to be using the Express framework. It's not necessary, but it's easier. And then Socket IO. So Socket IO is actually a web socket library. Um, I won't go into the details of how to establish a web socket connection, like the handshake and stuff like that, how it actually works. Uh, Socket IO takes care of a lot of that for you, and also cross-browser compatibility. Um, so it would actually downgrade to different connections if WebSocket is not available uh, for a particular um, browser. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna call this chat. Uh, chatting with geeks. It's kind of hot actually. So for, for those of you who are familiar with Node.js, uh, there is something called NPM, which is Node Package Manager. It allows you to manage your dependencies. Uh, it's kind of like Ruby Gems or Ruby. Um, so how you would do that is you basically create a file called uh, package.json, right?
and this is how it looks like. Okay. So let's call this chat for gigs. You can specify version number and uh, description, and then you you basically exp uh, tell npm what are the dependencies for your application here, and you can also specify the version. So after you're done with this, you would just run uh, npm install. All right. So this would install all your different dependencies. And while we are waiting, we are going to create your server side logic. Uh, all right, so I will just put it in the root directory. All right, so the first thing to do is to um, require the different modules that you actually need in your code. Uh, so in this case, we will need your a module called HTTP. Uh, this comes default with uh, Node. And we will require Express. Okay, so after that, we want to initialize our app, and how we do that is by doing this. And then, um, we want to initialize a server as well. Uh, server app, and, and listen on port 8080. Okay. Okay. So, um, what we are going to do is we are just going to serve up a very simple uh, web page in, right now. So basically, how you would write that for this is only if you're using Express. This is how it looks like: app get root. Then you specify request response. And we, let's say we want to serve up uh, index.html, right? So it would be send file. And note, uh, Express gives you this convenience uh, variable directory name, which is your root directory, and index.html. <laughs> So let's create index.html here. Our which one? Hello, sexy. All right. So let's start up our server. localhost 8080 that's where our server is listening all right so that's node.js and express um, so what's next is now we want to we want to use Socket.io to build our chat app, so what we have to do is, I've already specified in the package uh, as Socket.io as a dependency. So now what we have to do is to require Socket.io as the Socket.io module. So require Socket.io. And then we want to initialize socket IO. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to copy some styling that I've already done previously. Okay. So this is actually requiring socket IOJS from uh, from from the package itself from uh, from here. And the rest of the libraries are okay, jQuery and Bootstrap that I'm using for this. So all right, let's see how that looks like. Restart the server. All right. So uh, what happened is that right now is not loading in my my styles, uh, my style sheet and my JavaScript file. Um, so what we'll do is we'll set up the server to serve the necessary assets. Um, what I like to do is to write a setting to to basically predefine all the different directories uh, of, of where my files will be located. So in this case, views directory, um, style sheets directory. Um, we'll put it in assets slash CSS and JavaScript. Uh, and we'll put it in assets JS. Okay. And we would have to make a folder for that. So uh, make directory for views and make directory for assets uh, JS and CSS. All right, so now we have the directories. Assets, CSS, JavaScript, views. We want to move index.html into view. So move index.html into views, index.html. All right. Okay, so this we should serve this from the views directory. So settings dot we want to score directory. Yep. So let's see if this works. Okay. Now uh, I'm just going to copy in some code. Basically, this is to serve up the different asset files. Um, in production, you wouldn't really do this. Maybe you would use uh, a CDN or something to distribute your static uh, assets. So what this does is that basically it's a wildcard. Anything that ends with CSS, uh, we would basically send the file, the CSS file, uh, this way, as well as a JavaScript file. So, unfortunately, you have to restart your server. Um, and it should load in my styles or not. So, it's not finding it. Um, so, I actually forgot to include the, the files, so it's actually a blank folder. Um, just copy it. Uh, 
copying the CSS files and the JavaScript files. Okay. It should work. Yes. It doesn't look a lot better, but um, it's functional. Um, Okay, so right now we we want to initialize uh, socket IO um, to make it connect. So you have to write both server side logic as well as uh, you know client side uh, to to connect uh, the both sites to use web sockets. So we'll start with server side. Um, we're just gonna put everything in this file. Um, it's probably not the best practice, but it's easy to see. So IO, IO comes from here. So we initialize WebSocket to listen on this server. Uh, what we want to do is make it work. So on connection. OK. So how? Socket IO works is that you can basically specify events of your own. So in this case, a joint event is actually given by Socket IO. So whenever a client initiates a web socket connection with your server, and when it actually connects, it would send a the client would send a joint event to the server, and when the server receives it, we will do something. Uh, we will basically do something, whatever we want to do, right? So when a client joins, uh, what we want to do is, actually maybe to start off, let's keep things very simple. Let's just, build, let's just implement um, a simple, very simple chat app. So basically the client would send a message and that would call the message event and the server would receive it. And all the server does is basically broadcast this message to all the other clients. And how you do that would be client dot broadcast uh, dot meet uh, the message event. Okay, so don't get confused. This event is invoked whenever the the server receives a message event from the client, and the server would send a message event after that to all the different client browsers that is connected. Uh, and we have to specify the data that's being sent. So I'll just use a JavaScript object for that. Okay. Perfect. So um, we will have to set, uh, we have to initialize the WebSocket connection on the client side as well. So how we do that is, we have already required socket IO here. Script. Okay. So we'll just put everything in document ready. Okay, so how do we initialize uh, a socket connection? Do IO connect. Okay, what you have to put here is your server's uh, address. So it could be an IP address or a domain. Um, I have to check what my, my uh, IP address is right now. And I'm running on port 8080. Okay, so basically what happens here is that when you actually go to your browser and type in the address of this web page, it would load up this page and then it would initialize, it will actually connect, uh, try to initialize a web socket connection with your server. Um, and 
you have to specify the address. So now what happens is All right, let's see what it looks like now. Okay, so right now, this whole thing doesn't work, right? Sorry, uh, your function has typo. Oh, really? Uh, document not ready. Function. Oh, thank you. Okay, um, yeah, so back to this, um, this, this form right now doesn't work. What we want to do is to catch that event. So whenever someone sends the form, we want to catch that event and actually send the message through WebSocket. Um, so we basically want to prevent default. And this is just uh, jQuery. Uh, so the form is chat form. Hang on, guys. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This is using the screen. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. So the chat form on submit. Okay, so we want to prevent the form from doing its default, uh, which is actually submitting to the server. Uh, we want to prevent de default. And we actually want to use uh, web sockets using socket IO to actually send the message to the server. So how we would do that is basically we want to grab the message out first. Um, Where's my mouse? So this is actually the text area of my form. Uh, I gave it a chat ID of chat input to make things easy. So I'm gonna call it chat input. Uh, Okay, and so now what we want to do is basically send the message to the server. Uh, let's call it a message event, and we're gonna send. Oh, I actually haven't grabbed the message out. So chat input dot file. All right, so that is actually the message body itself. Uh, this is a jQuery method. Okay, so you can see what happens here, right? Like when we try to submit the form now, um, it, it would basically grab the message from the text area and actually send a message event to the server. The server receives the message here and then it would broadcast this message to other uh, clients connected. So let's test that out first. Oh, wait a minute. Um, so I haven't actually configured the client side to receive messages. Uh, right now the client is only configured to send messages, message events. 
Oh no, my time is up. Um, okay, focus. So, socket. When we receive a message event, what do we want to do? Um, let's keep it really simple for now. Okay, so this is basically a callback function, right? Uh, when, whenever we receive a message event, the data that is being passed from the server, or oh, let's just let's just make it an alert. So data dot message. So it actually works. Um, okay. Um, Q and A. Yeah. Right. Uh, just in time, I would say he actually built the entire thing in uh, thirty less than thirty minutes. Not not quite. No. Not <laughs> quite. Not quite. Yeah. But really, more importantly, what are your questions? Uh, yeah. So actually, before before we get to questions, um, that code that we see there, there's actually some uh, caveats that everyone should be aware of, and that is basic security, right? Like this form is not is not production safe because uh, it doesn't protect for cross sites cross-site scripting. It allows me to input JavaScript code and then if you are running my chat app, you know, I can just like do some funny stuff to your to your browser. Um, so you you would have to prevent that. And yeah, so I have actually completed a chat app and you can actually find it on my repo if you want to. Uh, the link is there. So awesome. Let's have some Q &A. questions. Yes. Um, What's the advantage of using WebSocket instead of using SMTP server for real chatting? So, um, traditionally, some people would use some other protocols. Uh, the thing about WebSocket is that now it's it's a new specification. So, you know, for you to actually build up your own server, you know, to your own connection to actually run a chat app, it's it's very involved, like there's a lot more things to do, whereas WebSocket is awesome because it's a specification and the, the world is moving towards that. So I would just say it's a new technology and it makes things a lot easier for as a developer. That's the main advantage. Is that using SMTP? Yeah, basically, S SMTP as in, I think, um, I forgot what it, what it was called, uh, but basically people set up their own TCP connection to build their own chat apps. So like Facebook, WhatsApp, they probably do that because uh, they started, you know, just when WebSockets was getting finalized and stuff like that. Um, I've looked through some of their code briefly and it's it's crazy, it's crazy. It's like, you know, now that we have WebSockets, it's like, it just makes things so much easier. Maybe um, so, somebody, yes, you can So, uh, yeah, Okay, maybe, yeah. Yeah. So, how practical are fallbacks? Yeah. That's a very good question. Um, so, the question would be, you know, how do you want to be able to support a lot of users, right? Um, if you do want to support a lot of users, I think, Socket IO is definitely, being able to fall back is definitely very beneficial. So it really depends on the use case, but I would say most likely it's a good idea. Yeah. Right, so, does uh, Socket IO communicate with the backends other than JavaScript, let's like say Java or something? So Socket IO is actually a, uh, it, it, it's basically for your Node.js. Um, so it's, it's a library for your front end and back end. 
Okay, so like for example, Ruby, I think it uses uh, EM dash web socket there. That's one gem that is very popular. What about Java? Um, I don't know the library for Java, I'm sorry. Yeah. How's the browser? How's the browser compatibility? Um, Internet Explorer, no hope. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure about the latest one, I don't even bother checking anymore. Um, but basically, if you use Socket.io, um, it actually allows uh, the browser compatibility is actually very, very high. Um, a lot of browsers are being supported, but all, basically all um, like Chrome, Safari, uh, Firefox, they all support it right now, the latest versions. What is skipping the web server layer like PHP and JSC? So you don't need to do that anymore? Oh, you, you still need your server side code to be able to uh, accept web sockets. So de deploying, uh, deploying your server is actually slightly trickier, but it's not too, uh, not too bad. You still need your server side code. Right, uh, any, maybe a last question for Josh. Right, if not, uh, Josh is hanging around here. Yep, I, I would be. Yes, uh, so thanks for, yeah. Uh, any questions, question. you can ping me on Twitter or my email. Right, cool. big round of applause for Josh.